Hey, if you haven't checked us out on social media, you should. You can find us on Facebook at Team Carter Family Adventures fan page. On Instagram at Team Carter Family. On YouTube at Team Carter Family Adventures channel. Are you sensing a theme here? And last but certainly not least, our blog is TeamCarter.team. Look forward to seeing you on there. Okay, this is Jen. And David. And we are Team Carter. Family Adventures. Podcast. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we wanted to 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 sit down and, and kind of catch up with where we've been, what we've been doing. I think we have finished um, talking through our, our, our road trip. And, uh, yeah, we've finished talking through our road trip and kind of explaining that. And now we're back. So, I might hear the kids knocking around outside, but we have uh, picked up a new goal recently. Which is? We are going to section hike the Foothills Trail. Now, if, if you've been following us for a little while, I know that we do these challenges. So, uh, back during COVID, we started on seeing all the state parks in South Carolina. We did that. And we did a big road trip out to um, out to Arizona and then up to Utah and back this summer. And now we're going to foot uh, section the foothills trail. So, it's going to take us a while to do it. Maybe a year, maybe two years. You know, who knows? But that is our objective. Foothills Trail is a seventy-seven seventy-seven mile. Trail. Sorry, 77 mile trail. That goes from Oconee State Park to Table Rock State Park. Now you can get in your car and drive 30 minutes from park to park, but it's 77 miles of walking yep. through the woods. It is a um, well-maintained scenic trail. It follows the Chattooga River, which is the border between North and South, South between North, blah. It follows the Chattooga River, which is the border between South Carolina and Georgia on that section. So it hikes right up in the mountains of, of South Carolina and Georgia. Uh, it's it's a pretty remote little section of wilderness up there. And it follows that for maybe about the first 10 or so miles. Um, you got to hike about 6 miles to get to the river. And once you get to the river, it follows the river for about 10 miles. And then it branches off from there. And so to this point, we have done two sections. We've done two roughly 3.3.5, 3.6 mile sections of it. First one from Oconee State Park to to the Tomasi campsite. To Tomasi campsite, and the second one we we jumped ahead a little bit and did Nicholson Nichols Ford Nicholson Ford Nicholson Ford Nicholson Ford Road to the Sims Field campsite. Um, I guess we're really hiking this trail twice because we park our car and then hike and then turn around and the next day hike back. So really, we're going to end up doing this twice. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> we're going to section hike it twice. <laughs> and so we do it. The whole family does it. Everybody, all, all three kids, and Jen and I, the kids carry, you know, what they can carry, which is about you know, three to four pounds a piece. Um, and Jen and I carry a bunch of stuff. We carry all our food, tents, sleeping I think bags, our, sleeping pads, all that good stuff. I think our packs this time, when we weighed them out, so, the, well, I should say, the first time, you know, it's trial and error, right? So, the first, like, little shakedown overnight camp out, we had the kids just carry their regular, like, backpacks. Like, we didn't actually have hiking packs. And that was a mistake that we learned because they just couldn't carry a whole lot, like, weight-wise. Because you're not carrying it on your waist, like a hiking pack. And so, this time, we had... Um, real hiking packs for them which was really helpful and it had like the whistle on it and it has the waist pack and so that was really great because Grady was able to carry um, five pounds and the girls were able to carry eight pounds each which which helped us out significantly because my pack was still 25 pounds and David's pack was like 28 pounds um, something else that we learned was uh, our water system we had a Sawyer squeeze where you fill up a bag that comes with it, and then you squeeze it through the filter into your water bottle. 
And to do that for one person is okay, but to do that for five people is incredibly exhausting. It's a chore. Yeah. It is a chore. It is exhausting when you, you're like, I really need to get five liters <laughs> of water. Um, and so this time, something that we did that was different this past overnight is we got a Sawyer Squeeze gravity filter. Um, and so basically you fill the bag, but you attach it to a tree and you let it drain using gravity. <laughs> into your water bottle and it went so much faster it was like so much less time consuming so but, so know, that was the, yeah I saw your gravity system was pretty incredible we're not sponsored by them but we would love to be we would love to be um but yeah their product Dear, is amazing so your water purification products you can reach us at what's our email uh team carter family adventures at gmail.com gmail.com where you can find us on instagram or facebook at team carter family adventures or youtube at team carter family adventures <sighs> That's right. So, David's about to fall asleep, y'all. He just I have this I have this thing I do. <laughs> well, if I get still, I'm probably going to go to sleep. Oh yeah, within like 5 minutes. Within a few minutes. I'm this is it's part of being a dad. I don't know. It's something that I do. So the kids will be like, "No, you left daddy alone and now he's asleep." Mm-hmm. True story. Sorry. So, so why are we section hiking for those trail? Well, because we're insane. No, we're not insane. It's just a really hard thing to do, and I guess we just like to challenge ourselves. Uh, most people, most people, by by most people, I mean the average semi-fit person can walk seventy-seven miles the foothills trail. Most people do it in five days, five or six days, depending on how fast you're moving. Um, we realize that our kids, three point six miles of carrying their own pack is about what they can handle right now. Um, now it's about a half day of hiking for us, by the way. Right. Now, it's we haven't day. experienced getting up the second day at, like, 7 in the morning and ready to go by 8 o'clock and having that additional four or five hours to hike. We haven't tried that yet because every time we get up there, we start around noon. Yeah. So a half a day's hiking gets us, what, three hours of hiking in? And then we... Roughly, probably four miles is about the max that we can do. Right. I mean, d- to be fair, we do tend to stop pretty early in the day. It's usually 4.30 or 5 when we stop. Mm-hmm. So we so we could push on for another hour, but we try to... We're, we're trying not to have it be a death march for them. Right. We want them to enjoy it, and it's challenging enough. Honestly, you know, three and a half miles is... is is you know, carrying a pack up and down mountains is challenging enough for them. So we try to, you know, we're not trying to overexert them, try to keep it within the realms of... We're not trying to set a record or anything. Yeah, we're not trying to set a record. We're trying to make it enjoyable while still being challenging, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, So if you complete the Foothills Trail and you're a part of the... If you join the Foothills Trail Conservancy, also not sponsored by them, but they're a great organization. You should check them out. Uh, I think... I forget how much we paid for our family to join, maybe like... $40 $40 or something. It's not much. Right? It's not much. Um, and you join for the year. If you log your um, your hikes of how, how much you hiked and when you did it, and you fill out an application and mail it in, you get the prestigious Peregrine Award when you complete your through hike or section hike, however long it takes you to, to hike it. Yep. Yeah. So... So that's a that's a goal for our family would be to get everyone gets the Peregrine Award and just mostly to spend time together in the woods camping. We just really like being together, and every time we spend time in the woods, literally as soon as we are done, we are thinking about when can we do it again. Um, it's Good. just I don't know. It's just, I, I just really like being. We just really enjoy being together as a family. We just really enjoy them. Um, the kids, you know, they're so funny because if they were here and you ask them, hey, do you enjoy hiking? Do you enjoy going on these backpacking trips? And just to be honest with you, they, they would probably say no. But here's the thing. If it doesn't involve if it doesn't involve Bluey or eating candy, <laughs> they're going to say it's they're not probably a fun time. It's, it's not a fun time. But here's the other thing. You know, me and Jen, we're there with them this whole time. And I can tell you from firsthand experience... They are having fun. They're singing. 
they're 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 telling they're, they're stories, cracking jokes, they're singing, they're walking. I mean, they're they're ima- using their imagination. They're, they're problem solving. They're overcoming obstacles. I mean, it's just it's just really fantastic. They'll they will impress you with their ability to to, to persist. Um, Miriam, our our eight year old carried carried Grady. Our four year old carried his pack for I don't know a half mile without without me realizing it, and then at uh, just because he said he was tired. Just because he said he was tired, and and he asked her to, but she did it, and because the packs are appropriately sized and weighted, it's not that big of a deal because you know his was his was four pounds, and so hers was eight pounds. So you're, it's suggested that you carry that kids carry ten percent of their body weight. So a forty pound kid would carry four pounds. Yeah. Um. You know, probably shouldn't load your 40 pound kid down with eight pounds. That would be ridiculous, but somewhere in the realm of four pounds, five pounds, six pounds, yeah, you know, yeah. however your kid, how you think your kid handles that. You, you take lots of breaks. And then adults are like 20% of your body weight. Yeah, you, you take lots of breaks. You bring lots of snacks. You probably don't do incredible distances. If we were doing legit, legit distances, Grady wouldn't have a pack. Probably, or, or if he did, it would have like a pop of water in it and nothing else. Mm-hmm. Um, and his pack is maxed out with a bottle of water. Um, he was his, carrying his what jacket, was he his puffy jacket, a bottle of water, and his clothes, his change of clothes yeah. for nighttime, and his, his pull ups. His change of clothes. Oh yeah, our four year old still wears pull ups, so we're we're dealing with that, which is interesting. Oh sorry, yeah. I, I'm not trying to embarrass the kid, but well, he's a four year old. We um, we just didn't want to have any accidents in our tent. And so for the girls, they carried, what do they carry? Their sleeping um, bags? The girls carried their Kinder Cone sleeping bags, which honestly took up the entire Kids Comet pack. So their packs look ginormous, but it's because it's their sleeping bag. Yeah, their packs look huge. But they say they're, um, they're, they're REI. So it's their two-pound sleeping Kinder bags. Kinder sleeping bag. They have their... Their, their puffy jackets. Puffy jacket. Do they have some clothes in there too? Um, they had their change of clothes and they carried a water bottle. So basically, just like Grady, with the exception that they carried a sleeping bag. Grady yeah. couldn't fit a sleeping bag in his yeah. day pack. Miriam carried the hammock because that was her thing. That was, she wanted to bring the hammock. And the straps for that. And the straps for that. So, so she carried that, and then they had a water bottle. I think Eleanor had a had a. T- Miriam's. Eleanor carried a toy. Yeah, Miriam's she wanted to bring item, a stuffy. Miriam's extra item was the hammock. Eleanor's was a stuffed animal. Um, Grady carried a plastic dinosaur. Grady, Grady had a Gary, Grady had a plastic dinosaur. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. I think a challenge that we encountered this time that we didn't encounter last time was this time we didn't carry enough food. Um, now everybody ate. Um, we ate well for dinner, um, which is crazy because I carried the food and we maxed out a twenty liter dry bag full of food. Like I had two giant. Ziploc bags, like those freezer bags. One one Ziploc bag had dinner, and the second bag had like our, our you know, instant Gatorade packs and our instant coffees, which don't take up much room. And um, I had like breakfast bars for the kids for breakfast. But apparently that wasn't enough. We underestimated hiker hunger when that hits, that you just want to voraciously eat. And we were like, okay, goldfish for breakfast. And those breakfast biscuits just aren't doing it. It was not enough. Should have brought oatmeal or something. I think something. what would have fixed it is two Mountain House meals mm-hmm. and five or six packets of oatmeal. I think would have fixed it. Right. Two Mountain House meals. So the Mountain House meals would have been for me and you that night. The kids would have ate the noodles because they wouldn't, they wouldn't like the Mountain House meals. The kids would eat the noodles. Their dinner was fine. Their dinner was fine. They had uh, I brought Easy Mac cups, which was great for cleanup. And then I got ramen cups for me and David which was fine and we also had gummy bears yeah. gummy bears and goldfish and um, apple slices like dehydrated apple slices yeah, and meat sticks next uh, time I think we're going to bring something extra like what he said or like tortillas with peanut butter and chocolate chips or something I think the peanut butter is a good one because it's such a high calorie high, high, cal- high calorie food I think you know, maybe two mountain house meals and some oatmeal packets probably would have would have solved most of our issues. Unless my my Fit On app is off, which we're also not sponsored by them, but I do <laughs> track my fitness with with that app. Um, three hours of hiking, y'all, burns like a thousand calories. I believe that. Especially, so yeah, bring the peanut butter. Especially carrying a big pack like that too. So. Nutella, especially when you're not used to carrying a big pack mm-hmm. like that, like it 
it hits us every time. We're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's just interesting, you know, s- seeing the kids push through, helping them push through something that's really difficult, them seeing you push through something that's really difficult, if they're even really paying attention to you. Um, you know, you let you let them take turns leading you let them take turns making decisions. You know, they're not really old enough to cook yet, but that's coming. It won't be long that they'll be old enough to cook. You know, actually cook on the stove. They help changing out the water bottles with the mm-hmm. gravity filter. Um, oh, getting firewood. Mm-hmm. This time we brought a mini starter log, which was great. Last time we didn't Secret do Secret tip. Bring a Good mini tip. starter log. Bring a miniature starting starter log. Because uh, I've experienced this twice now. It, it had rained previously, mm-hmm. and stuff was just too. Either I'm terrible at making fire, or stuff was just too wet. Too know, wet. However you want to look at it, it was just too wet to make a fire. And not that fire is essential, but if you're, you know, if you're not going, if you're not going multiple, de- multiple, multiple days, it's just a really nice little luxury thing to have a fire at the campsite you're going to. So. Mm-hmm. Kind of, like, kind of like a warm dinner, a hot dinner, mm-hmm. I don't, no matter what it is. Having it hot mm-hmm. is more comforting and morale boosting than like, here's a cliff bar, everyone. Yeah. And then having a warm, you know, a hot dinner in front of a warm fire would be even better. Right. So we're planning our next trip for November. Uh, it's going to be significantly colder in November, so that's going to be interesting. It, it got down in the, in the, in the 40s at night. Mm-hmm. And nobody was cold, thankfully. Yeah. Um, so that was nice. All five of us are squeezing into one tent, which I think is a four-man tent technically, but with three small kids, we just kind of make it work. Yeah. Um, one kid is at the foot, like at, at all of our feet, which, I mean, it, it works. And everybody was warm and everybody slept well and nobody really, you know, aside from getting up to go to the bathroom, nobody was really complaining that they were freezing cold. The kids are still little enough to where you can fold over their sleeping bags back over on top of themselves, and they're fine. You yeah, must be really warm, which is nice. Um, bring a hat. Bring thick socks. So secrets to staying warm. Let's talk about that. Secrets. Secrets to staying warm. Secrets to staying warm. Well, it depends on your setup. Mm-hmm. So first off, you the type of sleeping bag you have obviously matters. But it's not all about, you know, you can't buy a zero degree bag and expect you can sleep out anywhere and be totally fine because that's not the way it works. Right. The, the way that the bag is rated is rated for not comfort, but survivability. So you get a zero degree bag and you are just, let's say, maybe on a tarp, maybe not directly on the ground, but, but maybe just on a tarp, and you are going to be cold. You are not going to be comfortable. You are going to live. And you, you, you will make it, but you are not going to be comfortable. So to be comfortable, you put the tarp down, you then put a tent on top of that, then put some sort of you know thermo rest, thermocell, uh, self-inflating mattress, you know, self-inflating sleep pad. If your sleep pad is not insulated well, and you'll know this because um, if you have, especially if you have an inflatable sleeping pad, you're freezing cold. Yeah. If you don't put a blanket or something underneath that mm-hmm. pad, it's 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 about layers. That's why you know you do the tent footprint, then you do the tent, then you do a sleeping pad, then you lay on top of that. Um, so and then you have a mummy bag, whatever. Then inside your mummy bag, you want to wear your hat. You, now you don't want to wear too many clothes. There's you can wear too many clothes. And it defeats the purpose. I'm not really sure exactly how that works, but it's like you don't heat up the surrounding space around you. Mm-hmm. The reason so the reason why sleeping bags work is because you create a, a an insulated barrier of air around you, and so the you know, air is not a good conductor of heat, and so you you create this warm layer of air around you, and the cold air outside can't get to it, uh, and, and you do that in the loft in your sleeping bag. So the loft is, you know, the, the foam or the fuzz or the soft stuff. As that gets warm, it, it, it expands out, and the air in it warms up, and that gives you the barrier in between. So you want to wear, you know, uh, nothing super heavy, maybe like a light, you know, a light um, undershirt, a long-sleeve undershirt, and maybe some 
some long sleeve or um, you know, long john pants or something like that, and then like a hat, so a, so so a beanie or or a toboggan, something something along those lines, and then and then some socks, definitely some socks. Now what some people do is they will boil water before they go to bed, put it in a water bottle or an algae, and put that in the foot of their sleeping bag to keep their feet nice and warm. If you if you sleep cold. Uh, some people you may want to wrap that in a trash bag because may want to trash bag water just in case it all in your tra- and all in your sleeping yeah. bag is not a fun time. Yeah, not a fun time. That will that will do wonders right there. I've also heard people um, if you, if you got a big fire, heating up some rocks, and putting that inside the tent with you. Obviously, be careful of the not rocks. Not the fire, are, the rocks, not the, the hot fire, rocks, not, not the, the fire. Rocks the fire. Um, I heard of people waiting, but. but before they go to bed to like eat a Snickers bar or something before they get in there get the sleeping bag mm-hmm. uh, you know get your calories up and get your heat up this doesn't necessarily work with small children who get hungry at 4.30 in the afternoon but mm-hmm. if you wait to eat dinner and eat your hot meal and get really full right before you go to bed it'll make mm-hmm. you sleepy and you'll stay you won't be yep. freezing cold or you know if you got some hot chocolate mix or some hot or some hot coffee mix mm-hmm. wait till right before you go to bed now no, no, no. It's a it's a double edged sword here because it's double whammy. Because if you do go through all that trouble to get all cozy and then you drink a bunch of liquid before you go to bed, you're gonna have to use the potty at two o'clock in the morning. Which we use the bathroom when we're sleeping in strange places a lot anyway. Because mm-hmm. I wouldn't say that I was overly hydrated, but I still woke up twice to use the bathroom. Yeah, so it's you know two o'clock in the morning. It's thirty two degrees outside, and you gotta crawl out of all the nice, warm, perfectly insulated mm-hmm. sleeping bag, tent, pad, this, that, and the other. And so, you know, just just keep all that in mind. And with our family of five squeezed in a four person tent, which was great when it was cold, we're not even gonna attempt to try the like, well, let's pee in a jar inside your Absolutely tent. Not. We're not even gonna, we're not even gonna play that game. Absolutely which not. is why we brought pull-ups, just in case, because I don't want to mess with that. So for us, we 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 all sleep in a four person tent, and that makes that just adds that much, you know, heat to the right the situation. Now, let me say this: it is by no means uh, warm in that tent because it is just a tent. But at the same time. You open the flap to go outside, and you notice a marked difference. It's 40 degrees outside versus... I think Maybe. it got down to the 40s. Yeah, it was in the 40s, and it might have been 10 degrees warmer inside. I mean, there was a noted difference. Mm-hmm. So all that adds up to, you know, sleeping warm in, in cold weather. This is by no, And by cold, we also mean, you know, 30s and 40s, not... Not anything sub zero. Not, not anything sub zero. And we're not camping reason. experts, although we have been camping a few times. But we're by no means experts. But we also slept in hammocks for seven weeks uh, on a mountain top. Um, <laughs> a mountain top, but it was uh, it got down into the forties, I guess, where we were. Mm-hmm. And, and this was in Thailand, and so we slept seven weeks in hammocks. And um, you get cold in the hammock. If you're not careful, you can get really cold in the hammock. Hammocks are wonderfully comfortable. So comfy. Some of the best sleep you'll ever have. Mm-hmm. Um, but you got to be kind of strategic. So Tips to sleeping in a hammock. Tips to sleeping in a hammock. This is a good one. So the, the key thing for a hammock is having some sort of insulation up under you. So obviously in a hammock, you're laying there. There's just a thin layer of fabric between you and the air up underneath. And the, any air that blows up underneath you robs whatever warmth you have built up on your back. So you can be a, even, even in the summertime. Even in the summertime and even in a really well-insulated bag, too. Right. You have a really well-insulated bag, your back will be cold unless you have some sort of a sleeping pad, heavy blankets, something in that range. So what we ended up doing was we had the very thin foam with reflective material sleeping pads and a couple of blankets that we put down on top of that. We did that, added in a, a 30 degree bag because we couldn't get zero degree bags in Thailand because they just didn't make them. Because so Thailand this is like the equivalent of like an indoor sleeping bag. Yeah, basically an indoor sleeping bag. It was a mummy bag, but it was an indoor sleeping bag. Right. Plus two heavy blankets, plus a foam pad up underneath, and you sleep on top of that. And make sure you put like a, ja- a wadded up jacket underneath your knees to lift your knees a little bit. Otherwise, your legs will go to sleep. It's true. You gotta you gotta work out how to bend your knees. Mm-hmm. You wanna get the hammock as tight as you possibly can, so that you're sleeping as level as possible. Um, elevate your head elevate more your than head, your feet. Elevate your head more than your feet. You gotta make sure that's a thing. And then um, I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, those are the big things. 
Those are the big things. You're still going to have to get out of your cozy hammock. Mm-hmm. Once you get all that set uh, up, yep. you're still going to have to get out to go potty. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's terrible. It's gonna but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So, I mean, it's not perfect, but I would I would take sleeping in a hammock to sleeping on the ground just about any day. And we really appreciated the double, like the two-person hammocks, because you can cocoon yourself up in it and kind of throw the sides over top of you. Mm-hmm. So if there's bugs or something, you just... It's true. And the, now they sell, there's there's a hundred different hammock systems out sure. there. But, um, We're not advocating for anyone specifically. But Although if, if, if there's a hammock maker out there that wants to sponsor us, we'd love to talk. Mm-hmm. You can email us at... Team Carter Family Adventures at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. We have owned Eno Hammock hammocks and sleep systems we now own what is this let me, let me find this this one, this one is a, um, our current one our current one is an equip from walmart equip from walmart which i'm really a big fan of and it was like 30 dollars as opposed to 150 or whatever you know stuff is right. one of these. we have we have discovered that with small children you buy the cheap 100 dollar four person tent so that if it tears which ours hasn't thank god but like you're a little less concerned that like you know, someone's going to pop a um, tent peg or um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You buy a rip th- a hole in it. You buy a $700 Cuban fiber tent, and you're really going to care about who's carrying it and who's poking poles into it and who's scratching the tent wall with their plastic dinosaur and things like that. And so that's why we buy cheap equipment. Um, there are some things you should not skimp on, and, and it's, it's a bit of an art knowing... An art. It's just it's just experience, knowing what is worth paying money for versus what is not. Uh, you know, shoes for me and David is not worth skimping on. Like that's shoes really is important tough for us. To skimp on, man. Now kids outgrow their shoes in about a week. You know what it's like when you buy them shoes and they fit great now, and then like two weeks later, yeah. you know. So like hiking shoes, you can't buy them too big because they'll give them blisters. And you don't want to buy them too small because it'll hurt their feet. And so we've just had success in letting them wear the shoes that they currently have, like tennis shoes. Um, and that's been fine because if they wear them out, it's no big deal. Go to Walmart and get them another pair of tennis shoes. It's no, not a big deal. Yeah. But for me and David, we can't skimp on our shoes because we got to be able to carry a kid if we had to. Or, you know, yeah, so I, soldier and, on. And this is, this is funny. And funny. Funnily enough, I have been hiking in Crocs recently. Mm-hmm. I've been in Crocs and socks. Um, so I'll get a really, really thick, heavy pair of wool socks, and I'll wear um, some $12 Crocs that I got from Walmart in Chattanooga, Tennessee, called Vicious Sharks. They're, 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 not, they're not Croc brand, but they are Crocs. And I pay $12 for them, and they're from... <laughs> and they're phenomenal. They're, they're phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Probably the, the, easily the most comfy shoe I've, I've, I've ever had and we hiked the first section that we did I hiked in them this section I took I have some really nice Solomons like a, almost like a trail runner that I took and wore those the first you know the first day my, my toes specifically get scrunched up in the end I bought a bigger size like I did the whole thing my toes specifically get scrunched up in the end yes we went to so, REI and tried on shoes yeah, so, did the whole thing yeah the whole thing my feet hurt I switched over to my to my Crocs on day two. Didn't give me an ounce of trouble. It was like a dream. So we think the real solution is, folks, get a wide toe box in for your me, shoe. For, for us. For and just in, for me in general. And this may not be true of you, but I need a wide toe box. And me as well. So I have really loved um, my Ultras. We're not sponsored by Ultra, but we we'd love to We're not be. sponsored by Ultra, but oh my God, Ultra, if you're out there and listening, I will buy all your shoes. Um, mm-hmm. You can just go ahead and give me all your shoes, please, because they're wonderful. Um, so I think I have a Temps 3 and went to REI, tried on several models, and I love it. And I've had it, let's see, we hiked to Mount LeCant last November, mm-hmm. so I've had them for at least a little over a year now, gone on several hikes love like it's the same shoe hasn't worn out they're like trail runners they have the treads on the bottom and it has a wide toe box and i wear my wool socks with the like um how do you pronounce that name in in janie like the toe socks the liners um haven't had blisters 
It's incredible. Yeah, and I used to get blisters a lot, and and so I started wearing the toe socks. And I wonder if it just wasn't just the small toe box on the shoes. Now I bet I could do the Crocs and socks, and I bet I wouldn't even get blisters. Mm-hmm. Not unless my feet got super wet or something. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, here's here's something you can you cannot spend a bunch of money on. Here's here's something you cannot spend a much a ton of money on a tent. You do unless you are going on like multi multi unless multi you're day. Hiking with through the Appalachian unless you're Trail through or something. hiking, unless you know it's going to be pouring down rain, unless you know it's going to be dumping snow, you do not need to spend a ton of money on a tent. That is an easy place to save some money. It does the same thing. They all do the same thing. The only real difference that you get is weight as you spend more money. Mm-hmm. The only real difference that you get is weight. You can get some ridiculously light tents. But and again, David is carrying our tent. He is carrying, is it an eight pound tent? It's a six to eight pound tent. Yeah. I can't remember. That's a, that's a really big weight range, but it's somewhere in there. It's not, you know, the lightest you can buy are like, you know, one pound, two pound tents. If you use like your trekking poles as the tent, we don't have that one. Yeah, but they wouldn't fit five people. They either. wouldn't fit five people. We looked. Um, so. So, so they would have to carry two, and then... So we bought one off yeah. Amazon for like 100 bucks. Yeah, went, and you don't even have to spend that much money. I would, you know, uh, Ozark Trail, the OZT, repping hard. Mm-hmm. Um, now... Can we just give a shout out that Walmart's... Walmart has always had backpacking, hiking, camping stuff. But recently... But recently, within the last like year or two, three years, it has really upped their game mm-hmm. on the quality of backpacking and hiking stuff that they have so so another item that we have found that you can go cheap on is 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 socks now here's the here's the caveat it needs to be a wool sock you know legitimate wool but it doesn't have to be you know alpaca you know organic it just doesn't need to be that just just a, a regular Smart wool. Because your kid will throw it in the dryer. Yeah. Darn, not knowing that yeah, it's not supposed to be dried. Yeah, yeah. Darn tough. You know, and just a standard run-of-the-mill um, wool sock is is really going to do you really nicely. My personal preference is I like the thicker the sock, the better for me. Even in summer. Even in summer. I just really like the cushion that it gives. Mm-hmm. It, it feels like my foot's getting a hug. Mm-hmm. I just really enjoy that. Um it's a nice sock. Um, also, you know, we don't spend a ton of money on on clothing. So I wear, I have some Patagonia shorts, which are like a canvas, and that's cotton, which I know cotton is not ideal for anybody, but they, they work for me pretty well. David just likes to wear his shorts. Um, I'll wear it in the snow in Brevard at Christmas time that's when true. it snows. I did that one. Highlands, wherever that was. But, I mean, and Jen, I, th- I think yours are from maybe Target or Walmart or something. Um, I wear, yeah, my shorts I got for $8 at the, at the thrift store, consignment yeah. store. Um, they're just baggy shorts. You can find Almost other... Like joggers, kind of. Yeah. Do they have... They have Patagonia baggy shorts that are a lot more than the $8 that I paid for mine. And then I also found at a thrift store, I think a $3 Mountain Hardware pullover. It's lime green. It's mm-hmm. my Kermit the Frog. Mm-hmm. Um, pullover. And I have a pullover. Well, it's not really a pullover so much as like a running jacket, which sounds weird, but I, but I got it from a Goodwill a long time ago, and I've just kept it. Then I have a. That We're I wear. avid thrift store shoppers. If you haven't picked and that then, up, and then um, and then I have a couple of quick dry, sh- random quick dry shirts. You, I feel like you collect them over the years. Um, I have a couple of random quick dry shirts that I wear like t-shirts. So you don't have to go fancy unless you just want to, but the key is the layers, right? Because you don't yeah. want to sweat while you're hiking or yeah. when you're um, sleeping. You want to be able to take off layers if you need to and then quickly put them back on if yeah. you get chilly. So we also found these cheap uh, puffy jackets at Clothing World, Andersonville, North Can Carolina. Can we please give a shout out to Ray's Clothing Outlet now, World? Now, Ray's Clothing World Outlet National Emporium, Rug Emporium, has been closing down allegedly for at least three years now. They haven't going out of business now for at least three years. So Ray is hanging on by the skin of his teeth. <laughs> Ray, somehow. are you still open? We Ray, really need to know because if you're in the Asheville area, you got to stop by Ray's. If, you, if you've never been to Ray's Clothing World Outlet uh, Carpet Rug Emporium, it's in like an old mall or it's something. In a, it's an old something, but you should go. It's it's pretty incredible. It's phenomenal. It's it's at least thirty thousand square feet of. of 
of clothing retail. Carhartt Emporium. Yeah, I mean, anything you could imagine. Anything anyway, you could want in there. We found these really cheap Chinese-made puffy jackets that, that we've had for like two years now. Yeah. They're amazing. And, uh, we got them for like 20 bucks each. 20 and bucks incredible. each. incredible. Mine doesn't really fit. Like not real. Not yes, it does. Really, it's like weird size. Weirdly, you know, the arms are incredibly long. And the chest is just a little bit too small, but whatever. <laughs> it works. So we wear those. Um, and then I'm trying to think what I mean. What have you know? I I have some reasonably. I had some. I have some pretty nice underwear. I'll say that. I feel like I have some pretty you know pretty nice um, quick dry you know, wicking material underwear. Just the key, folks, is quick dry. Yeah. You don't want cotton anything. Don't quick, cotton quick dry packs. shirts, quick dry underwear, quick dry pants. Um, now, something that we did spend some money on for us, what was important to us, was I had, I got a Gregory Baltoro pack, pack. <laughs> 70, <coughs> 70 liter, and I had this is the exact same pack that I had had originally when I had a pack when we were, um, when I had had this pack when we were you know, traveling on the mission field, and I just. I just really liked it. I just knew knew how to knew how to wear it. I knew how it how it held up over time. I knew how to get it how to adjust it and make it comfortable on me. So I bought another one of the exact same thing. Do you remember why we first bought packs like before we had kids? For traveling. We were newly married. For traveling. For, for traveling. Yeah. Just because we knew we were gonna. Because we knew we were gonna travel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just couldn't remember if there was a hiking purpose, like we were gonna get into hiking or camping, or we were just know. gonna lug it around on the. To um, airports, but anyway. But yeah, so I bought that, um, and I I really like it. I'm I know exactly how to adjust it. I know how to get the hip straps just so so that the weight's on my hips and not on my shoulders, and and that's you know I I feel like I can I can I can get it adjusted perfectly. And I can you know hike like that for days. And almost like I'm carrying almost like I'm carrying nothing at all. Mm-hmm. So. And then Jen has... I have an REI Venus, and it's almost identical to the one that we had, like, 12 years ago when we first got married and got packs. I love it. Uh, Same reason. We went to REI, got fitted for that pack, and I just fell in love with it. And I tried, you know, three or four packs, and that was the one that I loved. Um, We tried some more when we moved here, so probably, like, what, three years ago, went to REI or something... Got fitted for more packs. Um, wasn't absolutely crazy about what I tried on because, of course, they discontinued the original pack that I love so much that uh, um, we just got rid of our packs. Our packs because we got th- we went through a season where we had very small babies, and I was like, I don't need this. I'm not going hiking anytime soon. This is just taking up space. Um, but I found that same pack on eBay, so I bought it. So. Have the same pack and it's awesome and um, it's a I think it's a sixty five liter. I'll have to double check. Yeah, you don't need the huge monstrous eighty liter. You know, again, our packs were in the less than two hundred dollar range. Yeah, I think mine was like ninety on eBay or yeah, something. Mine might have been one fifty, but ours were used, right? Yeah, used packs are. Are totally with with and I mean this was not intended to be a budget backpacking guy, but I guess that's kind of what it's becoming. Because we knew these fit well. Because we specifically knew what model that we wanted, and, right? And we knew how to make them work. We knew how to pack them. We knew how to lug them around. We knew how to adjust them. Um, if you want to, you can go to REI. They will fit you for a pack. They'll weight them. Um, it's you need to know your torso size, so you need to measure your torso from like your neck to your what is it your I forget what they call it. But anyway, there's a certain way you measure your torso. You need to know that because that's not negotiable because that's not going to change. And so um, then you you can, you know, once you figure out, try a couple models on REI. If you like one, great. Buy with REI because they do have a great, like, return policy. Um, great customer service. We have we don't have anything bad to say about REI. But then you can also go on like steepandcheap.com and like eBay or what have you. Like for, for my pack, I knew that it was discontinued. They weren't going to have it at REI. Um, I did try some new things just to see if I like the new stuff. But I really wanted, I was holding out so that I could find my old pack. And I found it on eBay. So there are other options. Facebook Marketplace, 
um, you know, lots of different options if you don't want to drop a ton of money on a pack. Or you can if you really want to. But for us, we just didn't want to. Yeah, it's if you, you know. I found the kids' packs on Facebook Marketplace. They were like $10 to $40. I would I would recommend definitely going to REI and try one on. And it's, it's hard to not recommend buying a new one. Specifically from REI because they have such a generous return adjustment policy, they replacement do. policy. So that's that's worth it right there. You know, go get fitted, take your time, pick out something you think is comfortable, then go take it on a hike. Go mm-hmm. put some miles in. This mm-hmm. is the only way to know. They have it's a really rental same, program now. You should check that out. Yeah, it's you really the same gear. for shoes. It's the same for. Oh, here's another budget item. We have two sets of trekking poles that we got from the Clingman's Dome yes. uh, Visitor Center in Great Smoky Mountain National Park. They actually they have they they are actually so cheap and so like a decade ago and so cheesy that they actually say Great Smoky Mountains National Park on the trekking poles, mm-hmm. and they have like cork candles. So it's not you know it's not super high in materials, space age carbon fiber. No, 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 no. They don't fold up. No, 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 no. <laughs> They're not. They don't fold, and we probably have. 50 miles on those something like that 50 miles we got a lot more than 50 miles no. but we've had them for a long time no, no i said we got about 50 hiking miles on those poles which again for us because we're not through hiking it doesn't really matter again if we were through hiking then of course we need the you know then you need something a little bit nicer but we're not you know we're doing little weekend jaunts of maybe 15 miles at a time max it's not really something that you need so just having a clear understanding of what your needs are, and then you know it's it's easy to spend a lot of money on stuff. But generally, man, as a, as most things in life, less tends to be more. Less tends to be more. Just you know, use some intelligence. And some of this comes with experience. You know, you tend to something backpackers say is you tend to pack your fears. So are you really worried about running out of water? Well, then you're going to take a lot more water maybe than that is necessary. Are you, are you worried about running out of food? Or are you worried about bears? Maybe you take bear spray and bear bells and, and bear this and bear this that and the other um, <laughs> or maybe that's just something you're really concerned about or whatever it is or maybe you know maybe maybe your feet hurting you are, are a serious concern so you bring liners and, and, and extra socks and, and maybe even an extra pair of shoes um, in the event of trying trying to avoid that kind of stuff so and all that's fine you can do any of that you can literally do any of that and that's the beautiful thing about it, because you got to carry it. Nobody else. So, and the Foothills Trail is extremely well marked. There is a ton of signage. The blazes are like every couple of trees. There's. It is highly unlikely. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's highly unlikely that you would get lost, um, even if you didn't have, you know, a map or a guide. I'm pretty sure you'd be able to figure it out. It's pretty. <laughs> self-explanatory they, they did an incredible job the trail is very well maintained um the ftc does a great job of maintaining the trail all volunteers thank you so much um because both times it's been a great experience um we're not sponsored by the Footage trust conservancy but we'd love to be one we'd, day we'd love to be um yeah i'm such a fan of the foothills trail i have nothing but good things to say about yeah. it yeah if you're looking for a quick overnight uh, what we did was really nice from Nichols from Nicholson Ford Road down to Sims Sims Field Campground. Um, they have fire pits. They have they fire have, pits. And that um, was, it was really those nice. grates that go over the fire pit. Yeah, nice leveled marked out spots. So you don't have to guess is this a campsite or not. Like you know, um, all the bridges were maintained. I mean, it was just, it, it's a nice, it's a nice trail. You should check it out if you haven't already done so. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, and if you're an FTC member, maybe we'll see you at the fall gathering. So on November 30th. No, November 5th. November 5th. November 5th. We are going to the Foothills Trail Conservancy does like a weekend at Oconee State Park, which is the one of the, the southern terminus of the Foothills Trail. They're doing like a conference thing that weekend. So we're going to listen to some speakers, maybe do a meal, um, and just kind of get in with the trail community. Spend some time with the trail community. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good time. Um, so this is 
uh, I'm going to say that's going to wrap us up for this evening. Uh, thanks for listening, as always. Uh, I'm always consistently amazed at the number of people who, who, who actually listen to this and listen to us ramble on about you know, God knows what. Um, uh, you guys are getting to see in real time, or I guess listen to in real time, our... our Hobbies and passions. Our hobbies and passions. And it's interesting because for a while, all we talked about was this road trip, and you guys never even really heard it. Never even really heard us talk about hiking. So this is a significant change. Right. So you know, surprise, surprise. I hope you like it because this is what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we love you guys. Good night.